Let's do it. Okay, everybody, this is uh, the third video um, talking about vertigo, so watch the first two. First, we just talked about the vertebral artery compression type testing, um, which is going to kind of overlap with your Dick's Hall bike. So the average person, if you think they, if they present with vertigo, the sensation of spinning, you're going to test the Dick's Hall bike with them, and that's going to test for vertigo in their posterior canals. This is the most common type of vertigo. Um, it's the easiest to treat. It's kind of fun to work with because they end up, you know, getting better quickly and it's really easy to test for. So to start the testing position, what I have people do is they're just going to sit like long sitting on a table like this. And actually before you get into that, um, word to the wise, I always get a garbage can for these folks and I always just get them some water. Um, they don't usually end up throwing up, but the one time you don't get the garbage can is the person who gets really nauseous and needs it. So Murphy's Law, get a garbage can just in case you need it. And then usually even if they don't want a water, get them one anyways because after you take them through the test, they'll be kind of a little bit woozy sometimes. So start there <laughs> and then take them in a long sitting. Uh, if you've got a high-low table, which I like because then they're closer to the ground, drop off the end of it so it's easier for you to tip their head back. So they're going to start long sitting like this, line them up so that their head is actually going to go off the back of the table. And then if you're going to test the right side, you're going to have them tip their head back turn it to the right and then I kind of like catch them so I'm sitting up there and I kind of support their head and their back come back quickly towards the right with the head extended and turned to the right not towards the right come back straight back head extended turn to the right like that so that's Dick's Hall Pike for the right you want to ask them to keep their eyes open and you're gonna ask them how they feel and you're gonna watch their eyes so a positive test on that for the right side is you're going to look at their eyes and if they tell you that the room is spinning, you should be able to see it most of the time. You won't always see the nystagmus, but what it'll look like is it'll be a torsional nystagmus. So their eye is twisting and typically what you're looking for is the fast phase of it should look like it's twisting up towards the ceiling. That's your positive test. So again, you take them there, they've got that, uh, they tell you that they're spinning and they'll usually kind of go, whoa. And if it's real positive, you'll see their eyes really turning quickly. So that's a positive test. Um, again, you might see a little overlap there with the vertebral artery test, so kind of ferret out the difference between the two. The main thing with positional vertigo too is that when you do that rapid change in position is that it's, the symptoms are going to come on quickly and pretty um, violently isn't the word, but it's going to be strong. And then typically after 20 or 30 seconds, it's really mellowing out. They'll tell you the room has stopped because basically those crystals have moved and now they've settled in and then it will stop. So contrast that with the vertebral compression tests where the longer you leave them there, they're getting worse. This is the opposite. The longer they stay there, they should just calm right down. And again, usually 20 to 30 seconds, they're saying, okay, everything is mellow. Some people take a little bit longer, but if so, just leave them there and then um, just wait for them to stop and then bring them back up. Be careful too, sometimes when you bring them back up, I always keep my hands on them because sometimes they'll get that sensation again. And if they do, the best thing you can do is say, okay, just grip the table, you know, tell yourself the table's not moving, put some compression on them so that they feel your pressure on them and they can kind of recenter themselves easily. So uh, test the right, test the left. If you're lucky, it'll just be one side is positive and then you can proceed to the Epley. Sometimes both sides will be positive because they're not lucky and they got you know loose crystals in both ears. So then you're going to want to just pick whichever side is the worst and start there. Um, again, keep in mind that it should be a torsional nystagmus. It should be beating upward towards the ceiling. If it's beating straight down, you've got a problem. That's not a good one. So um, that's usually one that you want to refer back um, or just ask someone like me who's a little more, uh, uh, I guess, experienced with it. But Beating downwards can mean a couple things, and it's not something they usually want to mess with. Hey, Barry. Um, and then if it's beating side to side, watch the next video, because side to side is not positive for this test. It's the up beating torsional. That's what's positive. It's really common to see, so again, it should be an easy one to spot. But if it's side to side, you're actually looking at the horizontal canals and not the posterior ones. So that's the Dick's Hall Pike and way too much explanation, but hopefully um, that helps. Next video, we're going to look at the roll test to test those horizontal ones. There we go. Thanks.